Hello, everybody. Welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today on Monday, March the 21st, 2022. It's about 3.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, thank you for joining me again as we go through this book together, as we grow together, as we read the Word of God together, we digest it together, all that fun stuff together. Glorifying God together, learning who He is so we can learn more who we are. Um, that's what it's all about, guys. And this is, again, out of Stand Strong. And where does it say right here? Four men by man. You've heard me say it before. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Man is male and female. So this book is for everybody. And it's out of um, Our Daily Bread. And again, I totally understand what the person did to put this book together. Because it's several authors. It's multiple authors. authors. It's uh, almost like the Bible, isn't it? But the only difference is the Bible, every word in the Bible was breathed out and inspired by our daddy. By the living God. Um, that's in the Bible. Uh, look it up. Don't take my word for it, guys. I say it all the time. Don't. You got a question? Something I say? Kind of. Eh, research it, please. Please, please, please research it. Get into the Word. Get into the Bible yourself. Find all this good, juicy, fun, filling, satisfying, nurturing stuff on your own. Anyway, let's get going. Got a lot of energy for a Monday. Unusual. Anyway, um, for the twenty-first, the title today. So who was a big one? The Hollywood Hills Cross. Don't know what this is going to be. Guess what I'm going to say? Write these scriptures down because these are our study verses for today. Please write these down, guys. Please go back and read them. Let God speak to you. Apply these verses to this devotional. And it's out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 through 31. Uh, it's a few more verses than normal. You might have to, you might have to God, give God an extra, an extra five minutes today, guys. Yeah, I'm being, I'm being smart and sarcastic, but... Uh, it's, it's time. It's time we quit playing around with this, and we get in the Word every day. Um, anybody struggling, you don't know why. It, I always ask people, when's the last time you got in the Word? Oh, yeah, it's been a while. Boom! There's your answer. Anyway, so 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18-31. through 31, And our lead-off verse is out of Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. And the Word of God says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me. Hallelujah. And I to the world. Guys, I'm going to read that again. Write this one down. Apply it, add it to your study verses. Galatians 6, verse 14. May I never boast. And I'm speaking. I'm letting God speak to me. And just looking right at me saying this. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through which the world has been crucified to me. And I to the world. This world's got nothing for me and I got nothing for it other than sharing the gospel. And that's what I boast in, the message of the cross. And our devotional today is written by Dennis Fisher. And he goes on to say, One of the most recognizable images in the U.S. is the Hollywood, is the Hollywood sign in Southern California. True. It's hard for visitors to miss the sign anchored in the foothills nearby. Less well known in the Hollywood Hills is another easily recognized symbol. I don't even want to read this, but I know what they're going to say. One with eternal significance, known as the Hollywood Pilgrimage Memorial Monument. That's a tongue twister. The Hollywood Pilgrimage Memorial Monument, this 32 foot cross, looks out over the city. The cross was placed there in memory of Christine Weatherill, Weatherill Stevenson, a wealthy heiress. In the 1920s, she established a pilgrimage theater, which was the venue for the pilgrimage play, a drama about Christ. While movies come and go, their relevance being temporary at best, the cross reminds us of a drama eternal in scope. The work of Christ is a true story, is a story of the loving God, it's a true story too, the story of the loving God who pursues us and invites us to accept his offer of complete forgiveness. The high drama of Jesus' death is rooted in history. His resurrection conquered death and has an eternal impact for all of us. The cross will never lose its meaning and power. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, this one speaks for itself. Just the uh, how, how true is that? I mean, if you, uh, I don't know if anybody ever watches Jay Leno or YouTube. Jay Leno goes out on the streets and asks these simple questions to random people. And they're questions that we should all know. 
and they don't know the common sense ones, but then you ask them something that has to do with social media or anything pertaining to the world, you know, worldly things, bam, they got the answer like that. Like right here, you could show up, you could show somebody the picture of that Hollywood sign. I guarantee people are going to know where it's at. You show somebody this cross, and I, I'll be honest with you guys, this is the first time I've heard of this cross. I, maybe I've seen it and read about it. I didn't know that was the name. I'm definitely going to research into this. But I doubt that too many people have ever heard of it or know about this cross. And uh, that, that cross has so much more power than that Hollywood sign. It always will, you know, what it represents and what we read here. You know, I don't want to boast about anything except in the cross of Jesus Christ. You know, what happened on that cross and what the cross represented back then, you know, it, it represented death. But to us, the Christian, the believer, it represents life. Because Jesus went from the cross to the tomb to seat it at the right hand with the Father. The cross is gone, the tomb is empty, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And scriptures say we're seated together with him. So we're together. We're already united with Christ if you're a true believer, guys. And that's all done through the power of the cross. Um, yeah, that's a 32-foot cross. That's that's beautiful. I'm going to have to definitely look that up. But guys, boast and brag in that. What, what Jesus did for you, you know, God, you know, fully God and fully man, you know, came to this earth just to show us how much he loved us and to die for us and to take that pain and punishment. And I will say for what I did and for what you did, you know, uh, one of us held the one of us held the nail, one of us swung the hammer, guys. This is what happened. But God still loves us if we would just give our lives and surrender to Jesus. It says he comes in, he lives in us and through us. And right here, uh, the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Guys, I, I I just set my got my eyes forward on that eternal prize, you know, that eternal that eternal crown of glory. And uh I tell you what, this is just this is this is a good one. This is a good one. This is worth meditating on and reading over and over and uh just let the Lord speak to you guys, but please take this, do what you will with it, however God speaks to you to study it and digest on it. But I would just I highly encourage you to go through those scriptures again and uh just let God have his way, man. Just uh <laughs> Just surrender. If you've truly given your life to Christ, you're crucified to this world anyway, and, and the world's crucified to you. So, guys, love you. Thank you for joining me. Until tomorrow, take care, and God bless you.